On April 9, 1940, the German Kriegsmarine sailed into the port of Narvik in Norway. The British fleet arrived and engaged them in battle the following morning. This was the beginning of the First Battle of Narvik. Welcome to Bizarre History. Today we are going to take a deep dive look at the two battles of Narvik in the Second World War and the beginning of the end for Hitler. Pacifist Norway hoped to keep out of the war by declaring neutrality. Unfortunately, she was too strategically important to both the Axis and the Allied powers to remain out of the action for long. Why was she so important? Norway has thousands of miles of coastline, which were valuable for both a German offensive against Atlantic shipping and a British blockade of Germany. Norway was a strategic location for a German invasion of Great Britain. Also, the northern ice-free port of Narvik was of importance because it was through this route that iron ore was transported from Swedish mines. Both Germany and Britain wanted control of the iron ore mines and the transport route. Both sides were willing to violate Norwegian neutrality to secure them. On April 8, 1940, the British laid mines in the waters along the Norwegian coast, but they were too late. On March 1st, German dictator Adolf Hitler had ordered a German invasion of Norway, which began on April 9th. The Kriegsmarine was to land at six ports along Norway's coastline, while airborne troops seized inland airfields. Narvik was the northernmost port. Ten German destroyers, commanded by Commodore Erich Bonte, along with 2,000 Austrian mountain infantry, entered Narvik Harbor, where two Norwegian coastal defense vessels were anchored. Despite their effort at defense, the German ships blew the Norwegian ships out of the water. Narvik quickly fell to the Germans, and soon all six Norwegian ports were occupied by German troops. Meanwhile, parachute battalions took the Oslo and Stavanger airfields. The German destroyers then needed to refuel and return to Germany, but there was only one tanker available. The other had been sunk by the Norwegians. This prevented them from leaving Narvik on the 9th as planned. On April 10th, Allied ships began a surprise attack at Narvik. Captain Bernard Armitage Warburton Lee commanded five British destroyers, the flagship HMS Hardy, Hunter, Havoc, Hotspur, and Hostile. A British historian has described Captain Warburton Lee as a man of integrity, honor, and ambition, a dedicated man, intensely professional, and although an excellent games player, somewhat aloof and single-minded. The British ships had orders to sail into Narvik to prevent the Germans from landing there. Just after midnight, Captain Warburton Lee received a message that the Norwegian defense ships may be in German hands. A radio message came through. You alone can judge whether in these circumstances an attack should be made. We shall support whatever decision you make. The British were outnumbered, and Warburton Lee would have been justified in waiting for the HMS Renown, commanded by Captain Whitworth, to arrive. But he had orders to act aggressively, and so he decided to attack. German destroyers Hermann Kuhn and Hans Ludemann were refueling in the harbor alongside the tanker Jan Wellemann when the attack came. At 4.30 a.m., the British attacked. They engaged and sank two of the German destroyers, Wilhelm Heitkamp and Anton Schmidt, at the opening of the harbor. Anton Schmidt was split in two and quickly sank, and Commodore Bonte was killed. Guns blasted, and explosions would have been deafening as the ships exchanged fire. Dieter von Reuter was damaged badly, along with two other German ships, and 11 merchant vessels were sunk. British ships exchanged fire with the German landing troops on shore in blasts of noise and smoke, but the British did not have the men needed to go on land. Then the British ships faced a counterattack from the remaining eight German destroyers, Wolfgang Zenker, Erich Kuhlner, and Erich Gies, commanded by Erich Bay, came out of Hergen's Fjord to the north while two more ships, the Georg Thiel and Bernard von Arnhem, commanded by Fritz Berger, emerged from Balangin Bay in the south. HMS Hunter and Hardy were sunk in the fighting, and HMS Hotspur was badly damaged. Captain Warburton Lee was killed in the battle, 
and on June 7, 1940, he was awarded the first Victoria Cross of the war for his bravery. Turning to retreat, the damaged ships headed towards the harbor opening. They were not pursued by the Germans, who were short on ammunition and fuel. On the way out of the harbor, they shot and sunk the German ammunition supply ship Rallenfuhls, and British reinforcements then blocked the German naval force. The British were also intercepted by two German U-boats, but the torpedoes shot at them failed to detonate or detonated before they reached the ships. In this first Battle of Narvik, the Germans lost two destroyers, one ammunition supply ship, and six cargo ships, while four destroyers were damaged and 176 men killed. The British also lost two destroyers, had one destroyer damaged, and 147 men killed. On the 13th of April, the British returned to Narvik with nine destroyers, the HMS Bedouin, Cossack, Punjabi, and Eskimo, Kimberly, Hero, Icarus, Forrester, and Foxhound. The British also had aircraft swordfish from the aircraft carrier Furious and the battleship Warspite, commanded by Vice Admiral William Whitworth. Their goal was to finish off the German destroyers. U-boat 64 was sunk by a swordfish aircraft the first submarine to be sunk during the war. The British had the advantage over the Germans. The aircraft were given orders to bomb suitable targets. Three German destroyers were sunk in the battle, while the Wolfgang Zinker, Kuhler, Bernard von Armen, Hermann Kuhn, and Hans Ludemann were forced to retreat under the cover of smoke due to low ammunition and fuel. Five British ships pursued them, but they were unable to outrun them. The remaining German ships were scuttled by their crew due to their lack of fuel and ammunition. In total, the Germans lost eight ships while the British lost none. Most of the German ammunition and supplies were lost. The British celebrated a victory. A land offensive occurred alongside the naval battles from April 9th to June 9th, 1940. The German 2,000 Australian Mountain Troops brought in on the destroyers were soon joined by 2,600 Kriegsmarine sailors who had been rescued from the wrecks and 1,000 paratroopers who received their orders from the German High Command in Berlin. It didn't look good for them at first. Norway wasn't doing well either. First, the Norwegian troops at Narvik were unable to resist the German attack because their commander refused to fight. Second, the 200 men who'd been garrisoned in Narvik and had escaped capture were surprised by the Germans at Bjornfield, and most of them were captured. Then the battalion holding Grantensbotten was also caught by a surprise in camp, and their many casualties demoralized them and knocked them out of the campaign. On April 14th, the British arrived and set up their headquarters at Hartstep. They were reinforced by the French Expeditionary Force on April 28th. A Polish battalion joined them on the 9th of May. The Allies wanted to retake Narvik and the iron ore transport route, but the commanders had difficulty cooperating with each other. On April 21st, Lord Cork was given supreme command of the Allied forces. During the second week of May, the Norwegians advanced against the Germans to the east of Grattensiede, while French troops advanced on the Laberg Valley. There was not much success for the Allies to the south or north of Otfjord. In mid-May, the Allies achieved victory, the first major Allied land victory of the war. On May 12th, the Allies launched an amphibious invasion at Beberkick, including bombing from British warships. The forward push of the Allies led to a German evacuation. However, things were not going well for the Allies back in France, and London called for an undercover retreat and evacuation from Norway. Norway upset by this resolved to defeat Germany on her own. However, the King and the government of Norway were evacuated from the country on June 7th. From the 4th to the 8th of June, the Allied evacuation took place, and on June 8th, German General Diedel retook Narvik. On June 10th, the Norwegian forces surrendered. Until the final stage of the operation, the Allies had the upper hand on both sea and land, but they didn't take advantage of it. They ended up having to evacuate. 
The Germans may have lost on the sea, but in the end, they achieved the goal of their operation, the occupation of Norway. Norway remained occupied until May 8, 1945, when Germany surrendered and Norway was finally liberated. If you liked this video and learned something new about the Battle of Narvik, please like and subscribe to this channel and leave a comment telling us what weird and dark topic of history you would like us to cover next. As always, thanks for watching Bizarre History.